Feel free to uh, take pictures and use the hashtag datacon.la in social media. So, uh, so our next speaker here is Chai Li from Tipco Software. Um, Chai Li is a project lead in the data science team at Tipco Software. Her work at Tipco involves using Tipco's analytics and data science apps to help customers make informed decisions from data and ads on them. Some exciting projects she has worked on with Tipco includes the ones with the Mercedes Formula One racing team and NASA. She will be presenting, presenting a talk titled, How a Data Science Project Effective Change for Low-Income Parking Citation Holders. Um, please join me in giving a big data day welcome to Chai Yi. Thank you. Thanks for um, being here this afternoon. My name is Chai Yi, and the project that I'm going to talk to you about today uh, is one that the company I work for, Tipco Software, did with a non-profit organization in San Francisco called Tipping Point Organization. And it is looking into the study of the impact of parking citations on low-income drivers. So I'm a... I'm a uh, data science lead um, in, in TIPCO, the, the data science team of TIPCO. And TIPCO as a company, um, we are in the business for uh, more than 20 years. Uh, we are a worldwide company uh, with 4,000 4, employees and 62 offices worldwide and uh, operating in 30 countries. So um, we have 10,000 customers uh, all over the world and um, the important brands, uh, key brands that we, we, we know about are yeah. people like uh, Macy's, um, T-Mobile um, and JetBlue, here's some, some examples. So Tipco sells um, enterprise software and then our software allows our customers to achieve what's called connected intelligence, which is simply be able to connect systems together, connect systems to people, connect uh, data to people, and then provide software to people to help them augment the ability to make uh, decisions using those software. So uh, the, uh, Tipco has a data science team and I'm part of this, this group. And in my work, I work with uh, our customers uh, and prospects uh, to help them use our software, use our data science platform to make their data science work uh, more efficient. Now, uh, a few words about Tipping Point Community, uh, our, our partner in this uh, project, also our customer. Uh, it is a non-profit based in San Francisco, and then its mission is to fight poverty for 1.3 million people in the Bay Area. And uh, they help people get on a path out of poverty, and among the things they do, it includes giving out grants to non-profits in education, in employment, uh, and in housing. And they also participate in city government uh, initiatives that uh, improve the lives of low-income people uh, within, within uh, the, the city. So. Now, the project that um, we, we did together uh, is the study of the impact of citations, parking citations on low-income drivers in San Francisco. It's a collaborative effort invo involving multiple parties and initially initiated by uh, tipping point communities. So um, in San Francisco, they have this Office of Financial Justice um, that had, had this effort to right-size amount of parking fines according to the ability of, uh, to pay. Um, of, the, of the citation holders. So um, Tipping Point was interested to see how they could contribute to this project and then um, they got some data, which are parking citations data, uh, from, from the city, from the SFMTA, um, and they wanted to analyze them. So this data set was some like uh, 7 million uh, parking citations, uh, which is not, not huge, you know, we're not talking about a billion rows of data, but nonetheless it's something which uh, is large enough that uh, you, you can't really use traditional tools like Excel to, um, to analyze. So what they did was they came to TIPCO um, and looked for us for, uh, to, to help them in wrestling this, this vast amount of data. Now, um, in the study, the team was interested to, to find out um, trends that related, related to low-income drivers. So are tickets giving out unfairly? Um, by neighborhoods, by income groups. And then the tools that was used by the team 
uh, had to be collaborative because we had users from Tipping Point, um, a business user working with a data scientists at Tipco, um, and they had to communicate the work that they did, the findings that they did, um, that they found within the, the project. And at the same time, um, we, were, we were talking about the 7 million uh, parking citations analyzed. It has to be able to handle a large amount of data uh, and be able to scale. Um, so we're also talking about um, ease of use because um, we're working with a business user. Um, it has to be super easy to understand um, and does, doesn't require the person to, to have very technical knowledge about how to manipulate uh, big data. And eventually, um, uh, after uh, the, 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 the analysis was done, um, there were findings and we had to con convey the findings to the city. Um, we also used visualization tools uh, to build our dashboards. Uh, to tell the story of what was found. So in the next portion, uh, I have this demo that will show you the key findings of the project. And uh, through this demo, you also get to see the tools used by the team, uh, how they use this to collaborate, um, and then how, how the tools were used to communicate the results uh, to the city government. Okay, um, so what we see here um, is, is, a, is a web browser and uh, we are in a data science platform environment um, uh, uh, that Cipco, uh, Cipco provides. Um, and in this environment, um, we have the concept of um, what we call workspace. And this is basically where everything, all the work about the project took place. Uh, this workspace is called Tipping Point and then the members of the project will simply just log on to this, this workspace and uh, work together. We see here um, that um, we have a number of people added as a member and Ashley Brown, she is uh, the, the business user. Okay, can, you, can you hear? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Ashley Brown, um, she's the business user at Tipping Point, uh, so our counterpart, and she's the owner of this project. And uh, just let me get this. Sorry. Okay. All right. Let's begin again. She's the, uh, the the business user at, at Tipping Point. She's the owner of this project, and then. Um, she was working with a number of people um, uh, in the team, and then some of us actually came on the team uh, rather late. Uh, so she was in particular working with uh, one of the data science interns um, uh, in, in the company at that time to do this analysis. And in this environment also, what you can see is, um, is, is, is a collaborative environment. Um, we get, get to see what happened um, to the project. Uh, in the past days. So every time somebody does something or uh, somebody wants to make a comment, um, they can, they can um, add comments here uh, to inform other members on the project of, of the status of what, what insights they found. So this <gasps> platform has also been connected to the data sources. Uh, in this example here, we just have that platform connected to uh, various databases and also uh, Hadoop clusters. Uh, this is done by the system admin so that when people on the project came on um, to analyze the data, uh, they need not worry about where the data comes from. Um, they just need to point to uh, where, where the data is. Uh, doesn't matter whether it, it is on database, is it on Hadoop, uh, they know that the data is there and then they will just, just look at the, uh, the, the tables um, in the data. So, now I move on to this view of work files, and work files is where uh, the bulk of the um, of the work is is kept. So, in later on we'll take take a look. Um, in this data science platform, work is done using uh, what we call a low code uh, set of tools, and 
users just simply point and click, drag and drop uh, what we call operators into uh, a workspace uh, to construct flows. So when we do a project, um, we get the data, we need, to, we need to wrangle the data, we need to maybe uh, join the data with other data sets. And then all these um, is done without writing code um, and just a matter of uh, point, pointing and clicking uh, in the UI uh, to do the analysis. So we also get, got a, a dashboard here that I'll launch here and then I'll come back to this later on. And uh, I'll just search for the workflow that I'm going to talk about. So I'll take you through the key thoughts um, uh, when this project was started. Um, so I said that, okay, work is done in the form of graphical flow, so this is it. Um, if we just focus on the purple icons, these are actually um, data sets that were brought into the project to analyze. So to bring data sets into a project, we simply just um, drag and drop a data set into the project and then um, it will be able to recognize, uh, we've got to do some setup first to tell it what, what columns um, it uses and then it, it, it will be able to recognize the table. Now, um, we, of course, started with um, the citations um, data set. So let me just zoom out a bit first to let you see the overall uh, look of the flow. So this is how it, all, uh, how it all looks like. And I'll zoom back in so that we have a larger view uh, for everyone to see. So can people at the back see what's on the screen? Okay. Close. Can the microphone gain be increased? Testing. Yes, just, just speak closer. So yeah. real close, yeah. very close. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> this is good. All right. Okay. So uh, now we begin with this citation data set. Um, this data set has some, a few million rows of data, and it has informa information on um, the amount of the citation, whether or not, whether or not, whether or not it's delinquent, uh, whether or not the person paid the ticket. Uh, it has information about the license plate of the car. So this is a piece of inf uh, very important information. So I'll just leave a trace here and then I'll come back to this uh, to talk about the license plate later on. Um, of course, other data uh, like uh, time when the ticket was, was given um, and then also on information on the make of the vehicle uh, like Volkswagen, Hyundai. Now, the initial thought was that, okay, we have all these citations, and then we are interested to know uh, how how are low income uh, drivers affected by citations. So, so we thought, okay, why don't we ana analyze it by zip code? Um, are there certain zip codes that may be associated with um, um, uh, uh, less well off areas where they receive a larger number of citations? Okay, so let's do zip code. Um, but we we also have to consider. Uh, now, the number of citations uh, could also be related to uh, the number of parking meters on the road, the supply of parking meters on the road, uh, and also the number of businesses um, in the area. So we have to control for that. Um, and so we also brought in then um, data sets related to parking spots in the city uh, and also registered businesses in the city. Is there um, the... Okay. Okay. All right. So let's let's hope that it's it's okay. And then in the meantime, I'll try to project my voice. All right. Okay. So we talk about citations data. We want to blend it with information about businesses in the city uh, and also parking spots uh, in the city. So we brought this data together, um, and then. We did a join, and as you see, um, the way that joins are done uh, in this 
environment is basically through this menu and then we specify that okay for these two tables I want to join make a join by zip codes um, and then select the columns um, that we want to keep um, as the resulting uh, data set so and the, the beauty of it is that now um, we have not really talked about the the technical aspects uh, of of the tool, um, but we, I did mention that just now that um, uh, some of the data is sitting on the Hadoop data source. Um, so when this join is done, uh, it's actually pushing the work down um, to the underlying um, data sources to have the join done. So it's not done in the software itself, but it's done at the data source, which allows it to scale to a very large um, uh, volume of data. Okay, so that's the, the more technical uh, 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 side note about what's happening behind the scenes. So, what did we actually find? Now, um, at the end of the day, we didn't we didn't find much uh, uh, interesting here by analysis by by zip code. So basically, um, uh, the results were pretty much expected. Um, we did um, a model uh, that uh, predicts the the count of tickets, number of tickets, um, by the uh, parking meter supply and the count of businesses uh, for every zip code, and then we didn't find any strange outliers. However, um, there was some other thing that was found in the project that led us to a, another stage of the analysis uh, that brought us some interesting uh, results. So, what the team did was um, they started to analyze um, delinquency rate um, by the make of the vehicles. So they noticed this interesting finding. So um, for certain makes of vehicles like your BMWs, your Audis, um, the delinquency rate is rather low compared to other, other makes of vehicles. So what this did um, for the team was that prompted the team to um, think about what other, uh, in, in what other manners can they um, uh, look at the data. So perhaps by the types of vehicles that people drive, um, is there any correlation between the types of, of uh, vehicles that people drive? So what happened was eventually um, they used this, this relationship between um, the age of the car and uh, the likelihood of people being low income driving old cars. So the assumption is that while well, People who are driving old cars are more likely to um, have a lower income. And then that is actually backed by certain uh, papers and studies. And they then prepare a data set. So they prepare a data set uh, to derive the age of the car by the license plates of the cars um, and then associate that um, uh, within this table. So they found something w which was meaningful um, that eventually they took to present to the city government. And, and to do that, um, I'll switch over to our dashboard uh, using our visual analytics tool uh, to show the finding. Okay, so let us now first take a look at um, uh, the layout of the city. Uh, so I first, when I presented, I said that one well, of the first thought was to analyze the the parking the parking citations by neighborhoods. And so let us first take a view of um, where the more well-off neighborhoods are, where the less uh, well-off neighborhoods uh, are. Um, in this map the red parts are the most expensive um, areas in San Francisco. The lighter shades are the uh, least expensive, most affordable areas. Now, um, just remember where this is, and then we'll switch to a view that shows us the citations on the map. 
and these citations are colored by the, the amount of the citations. Uh, red are the most expensive, white is the least expensive. We see that there's a lot of green around, um, which is about uh, in the range of 200 to 399. Um, there are some oranges, the orange in color uh, here. And then these are basically corresponding to um, the major roadways um, in, in, in San Francisco. Okay? Um, here is also a bar chart um, about the types of violations and uh, the amount of the ticket associated to each violation type. Um, we do also get to see that, um, uh, that distribution for a different mix of vehicles. So basically, um, the most in numbers are the, are, are the citations that are uh, the least expensive. The, the white ones are, are large in number. And then as we move um, up this scale, we'll find that um, the number of citations get um, lower and lower. And that's not surprising because um, if you look at the citation uh, fees in San Francisco, the fines, um, you get typically around 100, slightly less than 100, uh, slightly more than 100, you get that as well. Uh, the most expensive type of citation is to the misuse of the uh, disability uh, plate. So that is, I think, like 800 over. <laughs> so now, um, most of these are actually um, in the range of uh, 0 to 100, 100 to 200, uh, 200 to, to 400, um, things like this. Now, if we look at the distribution by make, it happens that the Toyotas and Hondas um, have a lot of citations. So are citations given out to them unfairly? Not necessarily so, because um, it, it could be just a simple fact that, that uh, there are many of these cars uh, in the streets. The interesting part um, starts to show when we look at uh, the citations by car age. Now, um, we break the cars down into cars uh, 10 years and newer, um, and cars that are 20 years and older. The blue bars are the cars that are 10 years and newer, and then the, the, the orange bars are the cars that are 10 years and um, old, uh, 20 years and older. So the old cars uh, make up just 6.3% of all cars um, that we analyzed. And if we look at the number of citations um, by the car type, uh, 6.4, fair enough uh, in proportion. And then we start to look at the total amount of citations um, by car type. That, that's the actual um, dollar value for all citations. 6.9, okay, good enough. But if you look at the total amount due, um, that means that citations, they are not paid um, or unpaid or partially paid. Um, we get to a number that becomes disproportionate compared to the 6.3%. We are up to 12.2% and then 11.4% for unpaid and partially paid uh, tickets. So that does tell us something is, um, is unusual um, for, for old cars. So now, if we break it down by uh, the violation types, What's the average amount of citation um, for old cars and new cars? So um, over here in the, in the uh, charts here, uh, we see the average ticket amount for different types of violations. We have the meter and permit violation, we have the street cleaning violation, and then we have the plates and registration. This is the average for everybody. And the blue column is the average for new cars, and then the old, uh, old cars are in the orange column. You can see across the board, the average ticket amount is higher for old cars than new cars. And then if we compare that, um, make a comparison of these, these outstanding amount um, with the minimum wage in San Francisco, we, we see that for those those citations um, with amount due that are unpaid, um, that are worth more than one week's minimum pay uh, in San Francisco, we are up to 12.8% uh, 
uh, of the total amount of of unpaid citations compared to for for all cars compared to just six point three percent of all cars among all the cars that we analyze. So this gives us an indication of the burden um, that is on uh, these old car drivers. So why is it that the tickets on old cars is higher than the ticket values uh, of new cars? So we found that it's because of the late fees um, that were slapped on, onto the, the fines. Um, so what basically happened is that Okay, people get a fine uh, and it's, it's blind to you know, old cars or new cars and, and financial situation of the, uh, the, the, the drivers. But um, for a low income driver, it's more likely that they are not able to um, pay, the, pay the ticket and they are get slapped a fine uh, on the ticket. And that brings up the amount that is owed uh, on the ticket. So if we take a look at um, the burden of old cars, we did some comparison uh, on the late fees access on um, parking tickets and compare that to um, the interest rate charge on property tax that is outstanding. Um, so if we translate that to interest rate, so it's a comparison of like 58.8% of interest rate um, for not being able to pay a parking ticket on time versus uh, an equivalent of 0.83% uh, interest rate uh, for, for penalty of not being able to pay the property tax on time. So, with this finding, um, the team actually made a proposal uh, to the city uh, via the, the Office of Financial Justice. Um, and then this basically uh, says that, well, to people like us, um, like myself, uh, working in the tech industry, having late fees charged on my parking ticket may not just uh, may not seem like something, um, but for but for a low income person, um, being charged a late fee and not being able to pay it, um, and then eventually have the car towed away and not being able to, able to get to work, that puts a person into a vicious cycle. Now. So recommendations were made to um, the city uh, to review the, the, the fees and fines uh, being charged to uh, low-income drivers. So what was the outcome? Uh, the SFMTA did make a decision back in March this year to reduce the fees for low-income drivers um, when they want to get on the payment plan. And then they also offered uh, longer periods for them to pay off the citations and they waived the late fees for out, outstanding tickets and they also um, lowered the fees for people who want to complete community service to pay off the parking tickets. So um, uh, it's a very fortunate uh, outcome um, that uh, this analysis that Tipping Point did was able to um, be backed up with data uh, shown to the city government that influenced them to make uh, decisions on um, uh, changes in regulations. So that was um, about the project. The tools that we see uh, in, in the project, um, both of them are uh, typical products. So the first one we saw was a data science platform uh, for people to collaborate on. Uh, we can have data scientists, we can have data engineers, we can have business users all working together in a centralized platform without having to install any uh, uh, client uh, on their machines. And then the second tool that we saw uh, is a visual analytics tool uh, for building dashboards for doing uh, visual analysis of data. Um, both were useful in exploring the data uh, and constructing reports, constructing uh, uh, dashboards to communicate the findings of a project. Now, uh, if you are interested to find out more about these, these tools, do visit us at uh, Booth P after this talk, and then we are holding a raffle at 6 p.m. Um, to give away a pair of Apple AirPods, and then uh, if you're interested, come to us and then uh, get a ticket, and then you must be present, present to win. And last but not least, um, our, our company is hiring uh, for data science, machine learning, engineer positions, and also a product manager. 
So visit our uh, careers website to find out more. All right. So that's the end of the presentation. Yeah, here's a question. So the evidence was um, what was presented in in this um, in this dashboard that while the the important assumption that we made was that lower income drivers are associated with old cars. So we use the age of cars as a proxy uh, to figure out uh, if the person holding a ticket uh, is a low income driver or not. So for old cars, um, the average ticket amounts given out to old cars is higher. Uh, so um, so the, the, the inference is that um, for low income holders, um, they're actually getting higher ticket amounts, not because of bias, but because of the um, late fees being slapped onto the, uh, the fines. Right. So the question is, um, are all old cars associated with uh, low low income, and then how do we define old or new? Uh, so that's a good question, and then we do get this question rather often. Uh, so yeah, vintage cars, yes, they are old, um, but then they are also uh, not large, not not large in number. So we are talking about across the board, old cars. Uh, what's the association with um, the the income level of drivers? Um, there are also studies that are done. So for instance, um, DOT published a paper uh, that, that basically uh, has some statistics showing that old cars are associated to uh, lower income drivers. So, so, so that's um, to answer the first part of the question. And the second part of the question is what's considered old. So here um, we consider cars which are 20 years and older. Uh, so I have this plot here. 20 years and older to be, to be uh, old cars. Um, the lady. Hi. Um, I love the study. It's so cool. Um, and I'm biased because I'm a professor of user research here. So this is quantitative research. And so I'm wondering if you validated this assumption about old cars with qualitative user research by interviewing these old car drivers to find out if it was that they were actually low income versus perhaps they were thinking, oh, I'm going to abandon this car, so why bother paying the ticket? Um, I I don't I'm not aware that we've done that um that that sort of uh, interviews. So anecdotally, uh, and what I read from what's published um, by the MTA, uh, so they had this this programs um, after the announcement of regulation changes, uh, to waive uh, the, the the late fees uh, to get on payment plans. So they actually published this uh, onto the Facebook page, and then there's actually an uptake of people, uh going on those programs to get, to get their fine either uh, waived or get onto community services to pay off the ticket. So, it's, so from, from this, this, what I read, um, it's a sign that it's not that people don't want to pay the ticket. They, they, want, they, they, they want to, uh, uh, to, to you know, correct things, but then was probably not in the position to do it. Uh, but with the regulation changes, that actually uh, spurred them, uh, gave them the opportunity to to go forward um, and make a correction. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you said you used the license plate number to determine the age of the vehicle. So does that mean that either Tipco or Tipping Point was given access to DMV records? Um, you can actually find that. So, um, well, we didn't we didn't get access to DMV records. So um, what's known publicly is that in California, the licenses are, license plates are given out in sequence. So from, from that, you can, you can um, uh, derive the rough age of a vehicle. But I think of low-income people primarily as purchasing a vehicle that's already used. Mm -hmm. And so if I purchase a vehicle today that's already 15 years old, and it gets a new license plate number, would that show up as a 
So um, the license plate follows the car. No? Yeah, so that was that was what that was what um, the understanding of well, what what's happening that the license plate uh, follows the car that um, we could make this assumption about using the license plate to derive the age of the vehicle. Yes. Uh, so no, I, I, um, we don't have information on, on that. On, on that, so what we we do we do know are the the reports uh, about um, people taking up these these programs um, once they were announced. Yeah, just in March. Yes. Could you repeat that again, please? Well, I never. So if you report a citation, you know the percentage by uh, car maker, right? Like the one percent is the answer, the two percent is uh, whatever. But I'm also curious, like for all the cars registered in the VA that uses the transit code, do you know the percentage by car maker? Oh, if it's a whole population instead of a citation. Yeah, is I it? think that, that would be an interesting, yes, I think that would be an interesting comparison. But I'm just thinking, is that according to your knowledge? Uh, for this project, uh, we didn't have access to that data. So um, tipping point, what they did was they approached the SFMTA, uh, the Municipal Transport Authority, uh, to get citation um, data. Okay. Yeah, so we didn't, for, for this project, we didn't have access to DMV data. Okay. Mm. Any other questions? Yeah, that's a good question. So the question is that uh, with the drag and drop environment, um, uh, is it geared towards people who who uh, are not very deep, not very deep into machine learning, but and just limited to use certain uh, CAN algorithms? Um, okay. So the answer is yes and no. Um, now, so let me just bring out one of the the examples. Um, there are many operators uh, available uh, in the tool. Um, so let's take the first profile of people, um, people who are not very deep into machine learning. Yes, they can use the platform um, like Ashley. Uh, she's not um, a, a data scientist per se. So what we'll call her will be a citizen data scientist. Uh, she understands data science, um, but she doesn't do a lot of um, uh, deep algorithms. Um, uh, but she, she can work with a data scientist to understand the findings. So um, she is one of the target users for this type of platform. And now for data scientists, um, there is a, a, a set of machine learning algorithms um, to, to choose from. Uh, so I'll just not filter down, but there are many uh, different operators here to choose from. Um, and for teams uh, that feel that this is uh, not enough, still not enough. Um, and then they are, um, they have um, uh, people working um, uh, using Scala to to implement uh, algorithms. Um, so they can actually build custom uh, operators to add to this pattern of operators. So uh, it addresses different roles um, on the team. So uh, it's not just only for for um, uh, non technical users. Um, it's it's meant for. Um, a full data science team with different different roles. Okay, I think we're just just in time. Yeah. Um, thank you, Chai, again for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, please give us feedback in the meeting app, and you can visit our sponsors in front of the Boulevard Auditorium. Our next presentation will start in ten minutes. Um, and this
sponsors, they really helped make this event happen. So if you can uh, visit them, that would be great. And our next topic is going to be graph computing, how the Grand stole Christmas by Justine from Microsoft.